Welcome to Santaroga's Surplus. We're going to be doing another video on SKS rifles. Actually, we're going to be doing another series of videos on SKS rifles. If you hear whining in the background, I apologize, but not really because we just had a litter of Golden Retriever puppies and their whelping box is right behind you on the camera. So, a while back, I picked up four of these. This is a barreled receiver. It's a Chinese barreled receiver from a surplus house. And they had a whole bunch of these and they were relatively inexpensive. Getting the rest of the parts together has not always been so inexpensive, but I've done a pretty good job of collecting them over the years. These came in various conditions. This one is from, I believe, Factory 526. It's a little bit hard to look at. It does have the Chinese military marking and it does have a serial number reminiscent of a 1961 Factory 26 rifle, but it's not. It's just, that's not what it is. It's definitely a 526. So, this one was imported by CJA Springfield, Michigan. Never heard of them. And some of these came with the extension, the, the gas piston extension, the rear sight. Some of them didn't. Some of them wouldn't have the front sight post. It's kind of all over the place. This one appears to be completely unused and has cosmoline all through it. Uh, it doesn't appear to have ever actually been assembled. And So this is set up as a project, and this is not going to be a very intensive video. This introductory video is not going to be a whole lot of gunsmithing work. You've got one of these, and you just got to ask yourself, how bubba can you get? Because you can't restore it. It's not a military. It's a, pre it's a press pin barrel, so it's definitely later production. And... I've had this idea for a while. I, I did build a SKS RPK at one point. I've, I've still got it. I'll get it on video at some point. So it's it's definitely kind of a Bubba project, but I wanted to see, like, just getting ideas of how you would develop or change the SKS concept if it was not abandoned for the AK. And one of the projects I've had in mind is doing a DMR or designated marksman rifle. So that's what this one's going to be. This is an unfired barrel and we're just going to do what we can with it. Chinese production chrome line barrels are very good as a rule so it should be relatively accurate. The big question when you start this project is going to be what do you do with the stock? We already know about the parts. Okay, We're going to have to do headspace checks and probably some adjustments which I will walk through. We have a bag of parts over here, and it is, in a lot of cases, a bag of parts. Some of the parts here are assembled, some aren't. We do have the standard stock 10-round magazine and an assembled trigger housing, which we will probably have to take apart to do U.S. parts count. So, that leaves the big question, what do you do for a stock? This is not the most important question, it's probably the least important question, but it's one of the ones that comes up first, especially with people who like to mess around with SKSs. This is the ATI, Advanced Technology Incorporated, Sniper or Dragunov style stock. And it's a molded piece, it's not, honestly it's not that great, um, there's a lot of things that don't the mold lines are very evident. It doesn't have any bedding or special. It's not particularly well fitted for the rifle, for the action. Um, in fact, if anything, it's so overdone here that you can't drop the action all the way back without some filing. And it has some odd features, like this big hump here, which is cosmetic, but prevents you from actually being able to field strip the rifle without taking it out of the stock. It does, however, have the adjustable cheek piece, and it has the nice sling bar, and it's it's not a bad design, it's just not terribly well executed. I suspect that with some filing and some fitting and some uh, basic cosmetic work, it could actually do reasonably well for what it's supposed to be. 
The other option, of course, is to just use a traditional wood stock and go ahead and put on a cheek riser piece and possibly a pistol grip or buy a thumb hole grip stock. But I think this is going to work out okay once we take care of it. I think it's going to be worth the video time to just show you guys doing the project. There are a couple of uh, design choices that you have to make in a project like this. And one is, do you want to do a modern DMR or do you want to do a 1950s DMR? And do you want to follow the Soviet pattern or do you want to say, this is a Chinese rifle, we might as well go and see what the Chinese would have done if they trusted their optics. And a lot of that comes down to whether or not I want to keep this um, massive piece of stuff here that has the bayonet lug mount and the front sight on it. I have a feeling that if I take all of that off and tune the barrel a little bit, crown the barrel right, possibly put on a flash hider, I'll get better accuracy out of it for longer strings of shots. I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make since you already have attachment point here on the barrel and you have your gas piston here, but it might help. It certainly won't hurt. And in, in a 1950s Russian context, um, as you can see from all of the DMR rifles that came out of the Warsaw Pact nations, keeping the sight, the iron sights, is going to be critical. Absolutely critical. There's no way they're going to get rid of them. So it's a question, what do you do for mounting optics? And that comes down to two basic things. One is cutting the stock down here, putting the side mount optic on, and then using, using whatever standard optics, just the regular side mount like you would do with an AK or a Mosin or anything else. Or using the dust cover mount, and this is a Chinese dust cover mount with 30 millimeter rings. And it's not completely horrible because this one has these set screws so that once you get it on, you can have a set of detents filed in to the back of your receiver. that will hold your position so you should be able to recoup your zero after you field strip the firearm and clean it. I'm not sure which way is going to... I, I have a feeling that mounting directly to the receiver permanently is going to work better. This is a little bit easier for cleaning and we're going to go ahead and try this and the side mount just to see what the accuracy potential actually is because I have a lot of people who have asked me questions about optics mounts on SKSs. So we're going to go ahead and give this a shot, get it on paper, get some video records of how it does, how it performs with um, some extensive use. But I'm probably going to end up putting another side mount on like I did with the Coate build. That's about it as far as those questions. Uh, as for optics themselves, I'm not going to try to recreate a 1950s optic. So I have two options right now. I have a 1 to 4 ACSS 7.62x39, and I have a fixed 4.5 power ACSS etched reticle for 7.62x39 that I would be able to put on with a side mount. Um, if it was a 1x, I'd have the eye relief to put it up here, but we're trying for a DMR, so we're going to actually have to do the magnification. I want to keep the stripper clip loading port because I think that is actually a crucial part of the SKS design, so we're not going to cover everything up here. That's about it for right now. I hope you're excited about this project, or at least not terribly bored. Um, it should be amusing. Remember that I'm not expecting, and you should not expect, sub-MOA groups, no matter what I do, no matter how well I tune things. It's a tilting bolt design. It's 762 by 39. It's just probably not going to go there. But, you know, if I can get three MOA out of it, then that's going to be perfectly fine for at least a 400-yard DMR rifle. And it's not 
unusable for 600 yards either. It's probably um, in, it's, it's, it's in that, that torso range for a frontal shot. So we'll see how it does. And I hope you want to join me on this process. Have a good one.